for this one, please. Ladies and gentlemen, sit on your hands if you have to. No applause for this demonstration. Entering the arena, we have, for their very first ever public appearance, the members of the Midwest Majestic Mustang Club from Mount Olive, Illinois, with their Mustangs. Mustangs are found in several western states. Three of those states are represented here today. We have Cuervo, a six-year-old Brula gelding, owned by Courtney Tukin, and Lakota's native, the Lakota's native girl, excuse me, a five-and-a-half-year-old black mare, owned by Deborah Nunley, and presented by Mike Bradley. Both of these horses are from the Sulphur Springs herd in Utah. Then, we have native Dreamcatcher, or Dreamer, a two-and-a-half-year-old buckskin filly, owned by Deborah Nunley, Orion, a 13-year-old chestnut gelding owned by Vicki Ray, and Dazzle, a 5-year-old Blood Bay half Mustang quarter horse mare owned by Jessica Sons. These three horses represent the state of Nevada, and Deborah Nunley just recently adopted two burros, which represent the Twin Peaks range in California. The Mustang is a feral horse found now in the western United States. And the name Mustang comes from the Spanish word mestino or mestencio, meaning wild or stray. Originally, these were Spanish horses or Spanish descendants, but over the years, they became a mix of numerous breeds. These were the horses that changed the lives of the Native Americans living in or near the Great Plains area. As European settlers came farther west, they brought their horses with them. Some were lost to Indian raids, others were freed as wild stallions, tore fences down to add the tame bears in his herd, and the tame horses escaped from settlers. Most Mustangs are of the light horse or warm blood type, often thoroughbred, organ draft, or quarter horse type stallions were introduced into the wild herds to improve size while hopefully maintaining the desirable characteristics. Horses of draft confirmation are kept on separate ranges. The coat color is the full range of colors found in horses. And while the Spanish blood has been diluted, many of the horses still exhibit Spanish characteristics. There has been a firmly held belief for several decades that there were no pure Spanish type horses remaining on the ranges of the wild horse. But in recent years, a few small herds have been found in very isolated areas, which have been found through blood testing to be strongly descended from Spanish breeding. Today, thousands of these wild mustangs and burros are in need of loving and permanent homes. And one of the main goals of the Midwest Majestic Mustang Club is to try and educate the public about these horses and to let them see just exactly how amazing they truly are. So many people have negative feelings about these horses, believing they're crazy, difficult to work with, or even worthless, and nothing, nothing could be further from the truth. Two of the Mustangs here today, Lakota and Dream Dreamer, came straight from the BLM, untouched by humans other than the normal routine once they are rounded up. They have both been a pleasure to work with. Do some more research if needed. Consider adopting one of these wild horses or burros. They have played a huge part in the growth and history of this wonderful country we live in. Give them a give them a life they deserve, and you won't be sorry you did. It's your opportunity to adopt a living legend. Midwest Majestic Mustang Club. <laughs> sit on your hands. Have somebody else sit on your hands. Do whatever it takes.
you for your cooperation, ladies and gentlemen. We do appreciate that very, very much. The Hackney Pony, the origins of the Hackney as we know it began in England, where the horses called Norfolk Trotters had been selectively bred for elegant style and speed. Seeking to improve on both accounts, breeders mated the Norfolk mares to grandsons of the foundation sires of the, sires of the thoroughbred. The first Hackney, as we know the breed today, is said to be the Shales horse, foaled in 1760. The seas were being crossed regularly by the 1800s, ships bearing both Hackney horses and the smaller ponies across the vast ocean, and improvements in British roadways in the mid-1800s also contributed to the development of the Swiss swift trotting animal. Now, the man could say, trot on and really go. This was the golden age of driving, when automobiles were not even a dream. The Hackney was the ultimate driving machine of the 1880s, both in America and Britain. And the first Hackney pony imported to America was 239 Stella, brought to Philadelphia. The modern Hackney is colored black, brown, bay, and chestnut. He should possess a small head, muscle and ears, giving a general impression of alertness. Neck should be long and blend into a broad chest and powerful shoulders. Compact body with a level back and round rib. The Hackney has a good foot and the breed, both horse and pony, has a good reputation for soundness. The action of the Hackney is hallmark, is spectacular and highly distinctive. speedy hackney measures below 13 hands show two wheel sulky the cob is a bit taller must stand 14 2 and under the withers these ponies must be shown with the appearance of a short cob tail and with a braided mane harness also called long tail this dynamic high stepper stands 12 2 Must be shown with long mane and tail and ponies to be shown to a four-wheel vehicle called a Viceroy. They are also shown in pairs. Featured here today, the Pleasure Pony is more about manners than size. Before your horse was a twinkle in your eye, perhaps you rode along with Trigger or Roy Rogers, the Lone Ranger Silver, Mr. Ed the Talking Horse, who knows? But little did you know you were riding an American saddlebred. Not to be in bad company, President Franklin Roosevelt, General Robert E. Lee, and Ulysses S. Grant, Carol Lombard, Joe Lewis, Carson, Presley and William Shatner also shared the irons on the backs of American saddlebreds. Even George Foreman owned a Palomino saddlebred. Saddlebreds come in many colors and sizes from 14 2 to 17 hands and are versatile riding and driving partners. American saddlebreds history is America's history. Let's first start with the mystic of important European breeds of old. This quest takes us back to 1600, as we realize our American forefathers had already put their minds to it. While their breed name has changed and developed, the quest for saddle-type horses has remained constant through our country's history. The American horse was first documented in a 1776 letter to the Continental Congress from an American diplomat in France who wanted one as a gift for Marie Antoinette. The saddle red type had been established. 
These horses have the size and beauty of thoroughbred, but retain the ability to learn easy riding gates. To form the American Saddlebred, there was continual crossing with thoroughbreds along with the Arabian, Morgan, Standard Bred, and Hackney. And thus, when the first horse shows were held in Kentucky and Virginia in the early 1800s, American Saddlebreds, generally referred to as Kentucky Saddlers at the time, were frequently judged the winners because of their proud stance, movement, and utility. The post-war era was the increased popularity of the horse show and its public entertainment. First exhibition recorded here uh, in 1816 in Kentucky with America's first national horse show occurring at the St. Louis Fair in 1856. The gifted saddlers dominated the competition. In the 1950s, the saddlebred graced the cover of Sports Illustrated and the breed went on to be stars of the show ring and silver screen and have spread from Canada to South Africa. Overall, the American Saddlebred have a long and proud history from the battlefield at Gettysburg to the bright lights of Madison Square Garden. Ladies and gentlemen, the American Saddlebred. It is said that God took a handful of suddenly wind, blew his breath over it, and created the Arabian horse. Purebred Arabians date back to 600 BC, where they were used in the battles of the Holy Wars. They spread from the Arabian Peninsula through Septimtans of the Roman Empire to southern France and the blood of the Arabian flows through almost every one of the world's breeds today. The Bedouins placed emphasis on performance and concentrated on selecting for stamina, soundness, speed, amiability, and loyalty. The beautiful and noble Arabians here today epitomize this perfect combination of fire, gentleness, stamina, affection, and loyalty. And the Bedouins shared their tents with these beautiful and prized creatures. There are several characteristics that make the Arabian unique. These horses have black skin except under white markings. When combined with the frequently uh, same gray color, they are efficient at surviving the desert's hot days and cool nights. Large flaring nostrils and excellent work capacity make them wonderful for endurance. They keep going and going. Large, wide eye set leave extra room for the sinus cavity, a must for the hot, dry climate. And typically, there is one less vertebrae in the back, making them more compact. The bones are dense creating strong bones and teeth. Today's modern Arabians come in many colors, gray, black, bay, chestnut, and they vary in size from 14 to 16 hands. The Arabian horse is very versatile. It can be used in competing, endurance, cutting, dressage, driving, hunter, jumper, 
English pleasure, Western pleasure, side saddle, halter, and the list goes on and on. Showing a Western pleasure is Renegade, written by Lori Kern of Petersburg. Renegade has received four national top tens and has been written by three generations of the same family. He's at home here, tied to a trailer or going down the trails. He's truly the perfect family horse. Silk Flambeau is showing off his favorite Navy costume, Jamie Geisler of Chesterfield. And Bo also show Hunter Pleasure, Western Pleasure, Saddle Seat, and Dressage. Focus Shalimar and his writer Marilyn Weber of uh, Wallop Arabians in Chesterfield are showing off their dressage moves. Shalimar has national top 10 awards in third level, fourth level, and pre Sageors. Showing fourth level, he was second last year in the USDF Horse of the Year All Meets Awards. And he received national champion in the USEF Awards last year. He's 21 years old. He will show an intermediate one this year. So we'll stop by the stalls. We'll learn a little bit more about the horses. Matador is an example of Russian bloodlines with a multinational winning sire and a dam of race breeding. Ladies and gentlemen, the Arabian. Mario Contreras and his Baroque horse troop can be found at Indian Hills Equestrian Center located in Gilberts, Illinois. He's also the head trainer at Medieval Times, he is well versed in high school movements such as Piaf, Massage, Spanish Walk, and Airs above the ground. You can also find him in many magazines such as Dressage Today and Andalusian Magazine. You may also remember Mario from the World Equestrian Games opening ceremony in Kentucky when he performed a beautiful piece of equestrian art with the Lexington Ballet. Here's just a few of the horses and riders that he has in training. Winston, owned and handled by Juan Caraca, an Andalusian stallion schooled in many high-level movements such as Navarre, airs above the ground, Spanish walk, and passage. 11-year-old Katie Berger with Quarencia, an Andalusian mare. She and her mare come with two reserve national championships and five regional championships have started in their dressage ring this year. Noni, a Frisian paint written and loved by Justine Sokol, are entering the dressage arena this year and look for a promising career for these two. Although entering a training level, they are already performing flying lead changes and extended trot. Jennifer Ann is on Tango, an impressive Andalusian style. Tango exhibits a very Baroque style horse and is schooled in movements such as Spanish walk, passage, and the Piaf. R.A. Amadeo, owned and loved and handled by Enrique Mentano. He's an Andalusian stallion trained in high school movements as well as dressage. He finished an impressive show season last year with a gold medal movement national title. R.A. Santiago, owned by Salvador Acevedo, and the son of five-time national champion Santiago. He's had a very successful start to his show career. 
three-year-old Andalusian stallion took national champion Spanish three-year-old colt at Andalusian Nationals in October, and he's had a promising start to his dressage career. The Radical Headlines, written by Fernando Trito from Rancho El Potro, Columbus, Ohio. This is a Gypsy Banner stallion, has already proven size does not matter in the dressage ring. And entering the dressage arena for the first time, leaping with scores in the high 60s, this piebald stallion is owned and loved by Armando Trito. Saving the best for last, the newest addition to the Midwest area's collection of world-class classical trainers and horses, Enrique Martinez, riding his Frisian stallion, Felker, from Monte Cristo Equestrian Center in Caledonia, Illinois. Enrique is a truly gifted horseman, and we're so very lucky to have him. Classically trained by Don Joaquin Miranda Gonclaves, and the master of the horse of the Portuguese royal family, and student of the Miranda School and Nuno Oliveira. Enrique brings an elevated level of equine expertise and knowledge to his students that he loves to share. The Monte Cristo Equestrian Center, training, riding lessons, all in dressage, and Doma Vaquera and working equitation. You can check them out at Monte Cristo Equestrian. In the late 1700s, a colt was foaled in the New England area that was to become a legend in his day and who founded a breed all of his own. The first horse breed developed in America. The breed was unique in that all of its members trace in direct line to a single foundation sire, Justin Morgan. Over the years, the plucky bay stallion outpulled, outtrotted, and outran his rivals and then proudly led the parades in the early days of our country. The Morgan horse of today has behind him 100 years of bred in qualities of excellence. He has a high degree of intelligence and the willingness to learn and to try new things. He truly enjoys working and makes an honest effort to do well. He will give you the very best he has, and for that is the Morgan way. He makes an excellent companion on rides where he is alert and eager to see what lies ahead. Another of his valuable qualities is stamina. Kept in condition, he has tremendous endurance and unflagging good spirits. Because of his staying power, Morgans have a notable record in the field of competitive trail riding. Another asset is agility. Morgans are used exclusively on many stock ranches where their alertness, cow savvy, and ability to move handily off either end have proven their value as working stock horses. Present day Morgans differ remarkably little from Justin Morgan's horse. They possess a disposition that makes them safe for a child, yet with the spirit to spare for any horse. Truly versatile. They can do, perform, they can perform well in any field of endeavor when properly trained. Montreal Endeavor is a 20-year-old 15 3 hand bay stallion 
been shown both in harness and under saddle since the age of six. CHF Kaboom is a liver chestnut gelding being ridden saddle seat by his owner, Samantha Bundy, who mostly gives lessons to students, some of which show and some that are disabled, some who just want to ride. Most of his life has been spent at Running Ridge Horse Farm in Auburn, Illinois. Representing the Morgan Hunter is Crestfield Dominique, owned by Jen and Morgan oh in St. Anne, Illinois, and written today by Jane Kent. 22 years old, the Dominique is showing no signs of slowing down and still competes locally and at the Illinois State Fair. Yeah. Representing a reigning horse, 13-year-old Morgan Gelding Wild Stardust. Star has competed in Western Pleasure, Huntsie, competitive trails, and is currently being trained in reining. He has a great personality, and his exceptional load makes him a pleasure to ride. Being ridden today by Dave Williamson, he's owned by David Janet Williamson of Bloomington. The Morgan Horse invite you to come to Barn 14 and take an up-close look at some of the representatives of America's oldest breed. The Morgan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 